How 20, old are you though? 22. 22, yeah. I mean, bro, I was thinking about this today. I just, I had just got sober. At 22. You're young. I, you're crazy young. So I think that you should definitely, but, but he's Trying also some wild shit. looking at other people that are even younger than him probably. Mm-hmm. And I was, well, yeah, that's the thing we have with social media. You get to see what everyone's doing all the time. So, yeah. And also it's, a, you know, because of technology, it's, you can definitely make it way earlier too. It's just like, it's, 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 it's a different, it's a different time I think than what it was. You yeah. Know, it's like, it, it yeah. Is. I saw my friend, he, he didn't even like win Sundance. He just submitted to Sundance. Mm-hmm. He just met the requirements. And I was like so mad because I was like, why, like, what am I doing with my life? Like, this is what I want to be doing. I should just be doing this, mm. but I'm not, you know? And you were, you were, you were mad when you saw it. I mean, I was happy for him and I, you know, I support, but it was, it was, I was more mad at myself, you know? Yeah. Cause I feel like that's what I should be doing. And you know, first time I made, so I got married when I was 20, like 27, 28, I had $200 in my bank account. I had been touring all around the world. I'd been dropped from three record labels. Um, and then I had my wife taking care of me. She was like my sugar mama. And I <laughs> literally, crazy. Uh, I made my first big money when I was 30 and it was like nonstop grind from seventh grade. <laughs> literally, literally, and, I, and, I, and I'm not, I'm not like exaggerating. Like every single night, like I got arrested at that high school right there for putting flyers in every locker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would go and I'd, you know, stickers on every single wall. I'd walk down sunset every single night, pass out, <clears throat> pass out flyers. I'd go to Venice beach every, every weekend, put headphones on people's heads, yeah. sell a box of CDs. And it was just like such a hardcore grind for so long. And it's like, <clears throat> but to have those aspirations is not a bad, I mean, to, like, I get it. At 22, I was feeling the same way. I'm like, why does this happen? Why does it happen? Why does it happen? But it's just like sticking it out and going for it, which I feel like you're doing. So, <clears throat> yeah. And I also think, like, don't, you know, everyone's path is what it is. And I think you've learned an incredible amount being here that maybe some other people haven't learned. Like, and I think people present their best version of what's happening on in on the internet yeah, so for sure. you're not seeing i mean i just that's think the it's the danger of it actually i also yeah. just think i also just think for me it's so important to not compare myself to anyone else i mean i can look and see what's going on but i have to know what my truth is and i have to like only compare myself to who i was yesterday mm-hmm. and if this is a step you're taking in the right direction that's great and that's yeah. like good for you and you like know so much you've learned so much um yeah and i told you before too it's so cool to have a like a hatchery where you can just grow people and then, and they go off and they do their thing, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and it's, it's hard sometimes. Like I've, I've had a lot of producers that I've worked with and kind of raised up and then they, they leave and it's a little bit, you feel like, Whoa, like what about me? And like, what about like, you know, but, uh, but then when they start killing it, you, it's, it's, it's hard. It's a little hard in your pride at first, but it's definitely like rewarding at the same time to know that like you got some of their start and, you know? Yeah. It's a struggle. Like I'm like, I'm getting a little better at it. And I think with Wickham, it's a lot easier because he's like a good person. And I like, I, yeah. I think that you like love me. <laughs> yeah. Like I love you. Yeah. I love you too. Like I really do. And no yeah. matter what happens, like I want to be close and I want to stay friends with you. I really yeah. do. So like, it's all good. But like, there's this other part of me that's like, like that. That's yeah. like, wait a second. What? you know, but I'm happy for you. Like we were in a band together Mm -hmm. and like you, your, your success is never, I never see that as like a, Oh damn. Like, why can't I be getting Hmm. that? You know what I'm saying? But there's certain people that are just good people, you know, and you want them to win. Like I want, like I want to want you to just be as big as you can be. And I want to like pray for you to get everything you want yeah. and not be in that place of like, yeah, I wish he would have included me or whatever, like whatever. Well, that's, well, that's why when we were talking earlier, like I was asking you to like kind of see the situation as my friend rather than my employer, Yeah, which I think is the reason why it kind of gets a little complicated sometimes. Yeah, of course. You know, and what do you, th- what do you think is, uh, what do you think you'll be doing if, I mean, what is the dream? Like say if, if, if you leave, if you leave Ridge, yeah. what do you see? Like, uh, like what's the potential that you see will happen if you do leave Ridge? I want to join the ICG and the DGA like before like 27, which is like the, uh, the cinematographers guild, the union and the director's union. You can't do that and work it. here. It's, um, well, I, it, it would, it's just an insane grind. Like I need like 150 union days on set on like union sets. And I need, like, gotcha, pay yeah. stuff for, like a whole year. It's this crazy thing that I have hmm. to like completely just, why don't you go Union Ridge? Wasn't can can Ridge production become Union? Is that even a thing? Um, 
I don't know. That's a good question. And I would love to look more into that. Just a, just a thought. I don't, yeah. really, I don't really know. I mean, I'm glad. I didn't even know that that was why. And now it makes even more sense. And I think that you should do that. I, well, yeah. I, I, well, the thing about that is that we're not really, as of right now, we're not really doing those kinds of jobs. I, I don't really know. Well, it's hard. It's, it's, it's weird because a lot of people are not hiring as many union, <clears throat> like a lot of actors do who are union. They're not getting the jobs anymore because they're, they, it costs more, you know? Like yeah. I was talking to the guy and said at the video, and he's like, it's hard, man. You know, like no one wants to hire union people right now because it's way more expensive. Yeah. Also like Andy Horowitz was over at my house the other day and he was talking about how like film festivals don't mean shit anymore. And it's like all DIY and like everything's changing. That's why I'm focusing more on YouTube and all this other stuff, but it doesn't change the fact that like right now you're like looking at this thing and you need to like check well, it out. Well, the union for the music video, like the music video industry is kind of like very different from like narrative <clears throat> as far as like getting union actors and stuff. Yeah. Totally. Cause like usually the, the music videos are like funded by like labels and there's usually like a smaller budget. So they can't afford SAG actors. Yeah. And it's not really like as, as like acting as in a narrative. Right. So you don't need like a SAG actor to like, yeah. You know. Like all the so Netflix, Amazon, that's all union. Yeah. yeah they're so all, there's, there's more union DPs. It, you union. could also argue there's more work than there ever has been for, yeah. cause there's so many, I mean like, you know, some of the better shows that I like aren't just like, like Mindhunter isn't one movie. Hmm. It's 20 movies and there's like 15 different directors and yeah. there's just so much opportunity. Like, yeah. I, um, you gotta do what so, you gotta do. If yeah. You, if you're feeling it and like, if you're not, performing, I need to do if, it, if you're man. not performing your best year, it's gonna be a disservice to Pat. First of all, you know what I mean? Like if it's, if he's, if it's it, always conflict, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, which, so it, which it kind of has been for like a while. You know what? It's kind of funny. Cause I didn't really, I thought it was something emotional or whatever because like there's sometimes when like we're all like whatever it's just like there's like a chip on your shoulder yeah kind of like when you're there it's like yeah. and he drives from fucking long beach and like it's just there's like a lot but yeah. like we'll uh we'll see where where this goes and yeah. we'll stay friends and we'll keep doing this and yeah. uh yeah. checking in will and there stuff. always be an open door for him <laughs> well that's what i was just saying out there is like i think most times at most companies when someone like leaves there's not necessarily like this like open door policy yeah. but like i don't see the point in that like yeah. that's just not how we roll yeah me either i'm the same way <clears throat> yeah it's just like all ego and i i know that when when my actions are 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 being dictated from a place of like fear ego yeah. like i can tell yeah like and i can tell that like I was having conversations with Wickham like lot yesterday, like when he wasn't there mm -hmm. and I could tell that some of the shit I was saying to him was coming from a place yeah. of fear and ego. That's and funny. Resentment. Yesterday I was, I was in a meeting with my manager and uh, like, you know, a couple times a week they present different artists that want to work with me and they kind of, you know, like, what do you think? You know, do you want to work with this girl? Do you want to work with this guy? And it was funny. I was looking at this stuff and I was like, she, she was showing me and I, in, in my mind I was like, Oh my God, this is so not my, like I'm not, what were you? I'm not inspired by this at all. But then I was like, it, it was crazy because my thought was like, well, maybe someone else is going to work with it. And what if, and what if this person becomes big and then I miss the boat and I and I stopped for a second. I said it out loud. I'm like, oh my God, I'm literally in my mind right now only thinking, like reacting out of fear. It's like completely like, and, and then I'm going to go into the session not being inspired by it. I'm mm -hmm. not going to do my best job on it anyways. I'm not going to get the song anyways. Mm -hmm. So it's, so I, it's, I, I was glad I stopped myself in that, in that place right there. And I was like, dude, this is totally out of fear. This is not out of love. And I was like, all right, next. And I was only reacting out of things I was really inspired by. And that's the way you got to roll because it's so many times in your mind throughout the day, you're acting out of fear, you know? So. Yeah. I feel like I'm at a point too, where like, I kind of don't care about like making like a lot of money or notoriety. Like I just want to be able to make, films like yeah. i feel like i'm dying slowly if i'm not in a way yeah you know like it we're feels, like made to create you know yeah so and i've tried like other things like i've been trying to like let it out through like the videography stuff we do or like the weddings and edits but it's like the more i like learn about those and figure those out and the more like i delve deeper into like what i want to do like i i just need to make my own stuff yeah. you know and i have before and that was like the happiest i've been yeah do you, know. do you have a lot of family pressure, your, your parents, like growing up? Or like no, they kind of just like, oh, uh, well, when I was growing up, yeah. But now they're kind of, they, they trust me to do what yeah. I need to do. Yeah. Cool. cool. So just a second, like what you were saying about the grind and like me and Jason were in a band called Delusion. 
mm-hmm. right out of high school. Like I was in like Dane. Uh, we were still in high school, I think. Or you, maybe do you join was, after? I joined like right after. Okay. But I was me and Tim were in a band called ATP, the A Town Project Bird, with like, and Birdseed. Well, yeah, well, so that's the other thing. It's like, it just like to kind of put all this into perspective, like nowadays people are doing things younger, but we put out, I remember we spent a thousand dollars to put out our first record, a birdseed album. It was me, Tim, Jason, and we different Jason, Jason Marcus. Marcus. And we, we printed out like however many copies of the CD. That was a big deal when those came to school. And we were in, we were in 11th or 12th grade. So how old is that? That's 16, 17. 16, so yeah, we're like 15, 16. No. I don't even know if we could drive yet. We had our parents take us to the studio. We recorded these songs and we had this fucking album. I was jealous of that. Right. I remember being like very like, Whoa, I gotta but like that was just, <laughs> that was just one of, like you said, so many different projects that yeah. we were a part of to finally get to this hyper crush thing. I mean, we did our thing. We, we, I remember we used to, and then me and Steve were also in War Machine. So I was in War Machine, Therapist, and ATP after time. 610 and Birdseed. And we would, we would buy 300 tickets from mm-hmm. the Key Club. Like, mm-hmm. we paid for them. Yep. Mm. And then we had to go out and sell them to our family That's and friends. That's so sick. My mom bought so many tickets for me. Yeah, so, I mean, and, and how many times we did that was crazy. And then, and then Jason had really was grinding and, and when he asked me to join his band i was like oh shit like fuck yeah because i had just started like getting into like djing and like i had got an mpc and i was like sampling and doing kind of like the keyboard and they needed that and carrie came over and was like dude do you want to be in delusion i was like fuck yeah like they were selling out the key club like they were yeah. like actually doing it you know we were kind of doing it and then and then that was amazing and then uh we were signed to Motown at the same time too. But then, but then delusion kind of like uh, took a lot of turns. Phased out, yeah. and I was focusing more on like Dane's thing. And then um, Dane got cancer, and at some point I got sober. And when I got out of rehab, I was like, "All right, I'm doing this." Steve, mm-hmm. what's up? War Machine, and we made a bunch of War Machine records. But during that time, we were playing with some electronic shit, and we had some singers coming in. And when we performed those Bel Air songs Mm -hmm. as War Machine, the reaction was so much funner. Yeah, it was like, whoa, like this is something that like could go. Like this Mm -hmm. is fun. This is like dancey, and like the the energy of War Machine was like, fuck. We had Mondo with a fucking gas mask on the side of the stage and (laughs) army fatigues, and it was like fucking (laughs) cannibal breath, like fucking six 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 stab the pope with his rosary and it was like all right people would stand there and like watch us and be like dope but when we played that fucking bel air shit everyone like started hey, smiling yeah. and it was like you wait you play those in the same set yeah so <laughs> so absurd. so we 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 left yeah and we came back out in like i had a leather jacket on yeah, and he had his fucking we came back out like in our outfits 50s, yeah. it was just like fun there yeah. wasn't like rules we were just like let's just try these songs this is like our other project. Let's yeah. see what's up. And it just felt so like good to mm-hmm. do that. So we started going in that direction more. Um, and, and, and the Bel Airs was taken from by these older dudes. So we changed it to hyper crush and just and started, it started to morph into this like eighties yeah. neon power glove. Hyper crush. They had a power glove. Yeah. That was so sick. And then it just fucking started working. But it was like you said, it was like a grind yeah. from, it was like over a decade of like just constantly making yeah. shit. When you make music now, or not music, or I guess you still make music, but when you create art, and you, is, do you have a different intention and like a different uh, motive and like a, like a different, uh, yeah, like a different intention with when you make art from when you did back then? Is well, it- I mean, I think that making like a movie, which is also my goal, is just so much more daunting because you just need like so much more money Mm -hmm. like we could just make music yeah but you can't really just make a movie and we've tried to shoot scenes and Mm -hmm. you know it it just requires super collaborative it just requires so many people yeah it's just it's so much harder so it's like you really just need to sell the script or i'm trying to kind of like take this back road which is like build up the YouTube platform, start making mm-hmm. shorts, get a fan base, start generating money, have a crew. I'm trying mm-hmm. to like just DIY. Third like door. Yeah, like I've only, 
like I'm trying to like make my own path because the idea of like selling it to some suit or like being in some system seems so like I've been in that system in a version of that system before. And it's just like, there's so many people that have their hands in the pot and it's just hard to, for me, I also really want to do like really edgy, like stuff that's not clean and not, I don't think I would enjoy making, um, James Bond notebook. Or, yeah, or even like imagine yeah. Pat making the notebook, <laughs> or, or even like a. I mean, I was starring <laughs> Patrick Rigg. But I mean, yeah, no, I think for me, every day is just like like I just watched this little mini documentary, this little no effects documentary about how like he's like if you're if you're in a punk band to be successful, like fuck you. Yeah, he's like we never made this for any other reason besides to have fun. And he's like, certain people can judge success by different things. But for me, it's literally how much fun did you have?